Assalamu alaikum and hi again everyone. So let's continue our curve fitting example. But now we are going to solve the same problem using an artificial neural network. So getting back to the PDF that we have um, shared last time. So if you recall, we are looking at this file. Let me just show you again. So you can obtain this file from eLearning if you saw the previous video. So now we are going to continue with the coding for an one input one output artificial neural network. So what we are going to use is this thing called uh, TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is a Python library that allows for fast numerical computing created and released by Google. This library is a foundation library and it can be used to create uh, deep learning models directly or by using wrapper libraries that simplify the process built on top of TensorFlow. So what, what I'm going to do now is of course you need to paste the PDF into your notebook. So I've explained the polyfit before. So now let's start here. So once you have paste everything, uh, there's one easy function here called run all. You just run everything so that we can see the output from the beginning until uh, now. So as you recall, we are looking at this problem. So the polynomial managed to fit the data quite well. Okay, although it does not generalize towards the end nicely and we are trying to use tensorflow now so before we begin it is important that we check the version of tensorflow so as of the recording of this video um, the tensorflow that I'm using is version 2.2 so it's working because I have experience before where the code doesn't work with a newer version of TensorFlow. So if in this case you are running this code with a different version of TensorFlow, you can go back to a previous version of TensorFlow if you, if you want to uh, make sure the code is working or you, change, you need to change some syntax because some syntax may change from earlier version to a newer version. Alright, so what we're going to do now is to create something called dense uh, network. So if you recall the notes, we look at this before actually. Um, this is a fully connected single hidden layer ENN. So we didn't use the terminology called dense, but dense is basically a fully connected network where neurons in the lower layer are fully connected to the neurons in the higher layer. So we're going to use this uh, dense uh, structure in TensorFlow. So in TensorFlow, there is another uh, API or application programming interface called Keras. Okay, you can see here Keras. So this is a high level neural networks API and it's written in Python and it's capable of running on top of TensorFlow as shown here and the idea of Keras is it is uh, developed with a focus on enabling fast exper experimentation being able to go from idea to result with the least possible delay and this allows for you to test your ideas quickly so you can follow the syntax as shown here and so we define a model sequential so this is a sequential model and uh, how we create the network 
is shown in the next three lines so you, so you can see I'm using the dense network so the first line here in the first line I'm, I'm adding uh, three units so can you imagine that there are three input units linear input units with input dimension one so if you recall here we have uh, two but in reality this is not the structure that we are working now we have one input and we have three units in layer j so assuming we have one input go to layer j three units and then we have another five layers layer say if we are talking about layer k so we have another five neurons here and then i'm using one output so we we are we are using one input and one output a and n because the problem that we are looking at is just x and y one input x and one output y so we can uh, we must we must make sure that the input and output is one. I'm using linear for the first hidden layer. For the second hidden layer is a sigmoid, and then uh, for the final layer is linear. This is this is something that you can experiment later on. All right. So that's how we create the model. Next, we we can. Uh, import the optimizer as you recall we talk about gradient descent talk about uh, back propagation so all these are embedded in this optimizer so this SGD stands for stochastic gradient descent if you recall in the in the uh, module we talk about two versions of gradient descent where we are using the sequential and batch version of gradient descent and the idea of SGD is you are allowed to, to go from sequential to batch by, by adjusting the number of samples that you want to use so if you recall sequential just use one sample at a time whereas batch will use all samples all together so in the SGD you are allowed to go from one to a batch of two or three data or more all the way up to the the whole data set that you have so SGD allows you to do that and then uh, the learning rate if you recall the update rule for gradient descent has the parameter learning rate so here it has been set for 0 0.01 and then there's another parameter called momentum to avoid uh, oscillatory performance of the optimizer so you can also play around with these three parameters when you are optimizing your, your neural network so next you can compile another loss Okay, loss is the error function that we learn in the class. Okay, we call it the error function. In TensorFlow, they use this term loss. It's also the same as objective function or, or error function. So once you've done the setting up, remember you design the structure, you choose what kind of activation functions, you choose of course how many inputs and how many outputs, you choose the optimizer, the learning rule, where the stochastic gradient descent. There are so many optimizer that you can use, which you can experiment on lit, uh, later. And of course, the loss function is also many that you can choose from. So once you have selected that, then you can run the uh, ANN model dot fit. Okay, so I'm using. 500 epoch uh, with a batch size of 2 so you can go from 1 up to the total number of data sets that you have so once you have done that 
and you can test so uh, if you look at this the neural network are trained using the training data x train and y train and then we test it using the test data x and then we plot it so let's look at the performance of our ENN so you can see it here right so I believe this can further be improved so you can see it's sort of generalized better than the polynomial if you look at the polynomial figure of course you can compare the error the resulting error uh, from the polynomial and the and the ENN if you if you are really interested in the difference okay so this is the result of the polynomial and the one we saw before is the one for the ENN right so it is part of the if you, if you want to explore more so please after the listening or looking at this video please try and experiment with other by changing other parameters of the ENN you can play around with the number of layers although we are not talking about uh, you know deep learning yet this is just a chance for you to experiment with different types of uh, neural network structure learning rules learning rate and the momentum rate and also the uh, the loss function okay so you can experiment uh, experiment with other types of uh, things of parameters and finally uh, one last note you can uh, view the ENN model that you have created okay by this command to summarize it so how many parameters that you have is that all together 32 parameters so that's quite a lot and with this is the 351 structure so you have two hidden layers and one one output layer and one input okay thank you very much so have fun trying out and, and try to improve the ANN so that it can fit the data as well as it uh, as possible so until next time thank you everyone see you again assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh